some challenges. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with uh, Michael Ann's friend, uh, Dina, and help her through this. Um, Lord, as we bow our hearts and our heads and as we consider um, how wonderful we have it, we ask, Lord, that you'd bless us as it's wonderful to have our Bibles open in front of us. Many times we've seen um, uh, pictures or uh, hear stories of folks in jails and prisons that have barely a page of the scripture or many of them from their own memories might be etching on the wall of a cell uh, scripture that they can recall Uh, we certainly are far more blessed than that and we're grateful for it and so as we open your word we pray that you would help us that we might get from it what you spoke and that in our hearts we might realize that there is a standard by which you desire each Christian to live to. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us as we first learn about it, then we uh, put it into practice. So help us to be people of your word today as we open your word, as we hear your word, um, and as we obey it. In that precious name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Well, I'm going to turn, uh, ask you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. I've still been going through uh, the book of Exodus, and we've been speaking of the miracles that were evidenced through Moses' ministry. And last week we finished up with the Ten Commandments, and that last one, Thou shalt not covet. Um, I was with some uh, men uh, uh, yesterday morning, and um, for some reason or other, I started preaching to them. I wonder why. And um, I shared with them what I was going to share with you this morning, and I explained that I was going to use that last of the Ten Commandments to lead into what Jesus thought of or taught about the Ten Commandments. And we see it here in Matthew chapter 5, and I used the word or the, the Tenth Commandment, thou shalt not covet. And one man says, um, preacher, I don't even know what that means. Uh, It's not a word that we use very often. It's that desiring or lusting after what someone else owns or has. And so today I'd like for us to now take a look at what Jesus said about the commandments and how he made us think about them internally. So if you would please stand as we read from Matthew chapter 5, and that would be the first 12 verses. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Uh, uh, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you uh, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I'm going to invite you to be seated, but certainly I want you to keep hold of your Bible because I want to reference the rest of the fifth chapter because throughout it we see where Jesus stood on the Ten Commandments and how he literally came to fulfill them. Uh, C.S. Lewis, in his marvelous book, Mere Christianity, if you haven't read it, I've got a couple of copies of it, and I'd be happy to share with you, tells the story of a young man who was asked, what is God like? Could you describe God? And this young man said, well, God is above us, sitting on a throne, watching over us, and the very moment any of us begin to enjoy ourselves, he puts it to a halt. Isn't that kind of true that some of us think that we can have all the fun in the world until God steps in and he has to stop all of our fun? 
Uh, that's not true, but that's unfortunate that some people think about that. When we speak of morality, uh, many times we think of something that interferes or stops us from having a good time. But instead, and I'm kind of citing C.S. Lewis in one of his small little chapters on morality, uh, and, and instead we need to think of this, that there has to be rules for directing the human machine. Uh, don't you like that terminology? There has to be some rules and direction for running this human machine. Um, so therefore, some of these do interfere with natural inclinations. Um, when I was teaching driver's ed, uh, inevitably there would be a kid that got in the car and did something wrong, and I said, no, you can't do it that way. Uh, I still remember trying to teach Lauren. Leah learned how to drive on a stick shift. Lauren didn't. Um, but uh, Leah had my old car as a stick shift. She bought another one. It was a stick shift. She bought another car. It was a stick shift. But, boy, when I sat down with Lauren and tried to teach her how to drive a stick shift, I had a different animal in the car with me. Um, and you have to say, no, don't do it that way. Uh, immediately she pushed her left foot into the clutch she put it in first gear, she let go of it, and boy, here we go. Chugging, 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 you know how they do. And then when she went to shift to second gear, she put the clutch in, put it to neutral, then let the clutch out, and then tried to get second without having the clutch in. Everybody in town heard that grinding. All right, now, you and I have to recognize the fact that we might try to do things quite naturally, and yet it doesn't work. And therefore, the Lord has to come along, and he gave us the Ten Commandments, and Jesus came along and helped us understand even more about this. Could I say this about another uh, area, and that is math. Um, if you make a mistake in an algebraic problem, uh, if you don't correct it, then it will show in the end, won't it? Um, when we first got married... Um, I immediately gave the checkbook to Lynn because I'm absent-minded. I don't care if, the balance, if it balances or not. But every month when we get a statement in the mail, she immediately goes to the kitchen table and starts um, making all these whatever she does. And she, it, it has to come down to the right scent or something's wrong. Um, I don't think a few pennies matters, but I guess at the end of my lifetime, if uh, I was off every month by a couple of pennies, I, it might be dollars, right? Well, if we don't correct mistakes, then ultimately they are a big problem later on. C.S. Lewis uses this illustration, and we'll get to the scripture real quickly here. But if we think about morality or moral rules or laws or the commandments or the Beatitudes, we have to think in terms of three things. Here we come. The first thing is this. Um, what problem is this to all of human society? Uh, God wrote the Ten Commandments. He gave them to Moses that we were to be living by them. You could see that there would be a problem if people go around murdering each other. Amen? All right? Um, if we're lying to each other. If we don't honor our parents. Uh, so uh, the first area that we have to think about when it comes to the things in the Scripture is, is this creating harmony among all people? We have to think, Fair play and harmony among people. But what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not see, as a matter of fact, uh, we see oftentimes the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, is that they failed to realize that as much as a moral rule or law, a commandment, has to do with the harmony of all people living together, we have to think about what's down inside of every person. All right, now here I come. Here, here, it's going to unfold here. And that is that Jesus made us look inside, that there has to be harmony within each person. If there is not harmony inside a person, then drastic things can take place, right? And so there's the harmony in society. There's the harmony inside a person. And then ready? 
there's another kind of harmony that we have to consider. And that is, are we doing what God had created us to do? Are we on the same page as God is? Are you living up to the potential that God has for you? Are you living out your plan for the plan that he has for you? Let's consider this, and again, I'm still citing C.S. Lewis, who spoke of people with instruments. Um, uh, it would be important for each instrument to be tuned in, right? It has to be tuned um, there's a guitar back there. Uh, you've heard me play the harp, um, uh, the piano. We have this one because it was hard to keep the old one in, in tune, right? Okay. So every instrument, instrument has to be tuned up inside, right? Now you take those same instruments and they have to be in tune with each other, right? Um, uh, it, it would be pretty difficult for me to take a ukulele and play it if it's tuned in C when everybody else is tuned in G, right? It wouldn't make sense, would it? Now, you ready for this? Thirdly, everybody in tune with each other, every instrument tuned in. Thirdly, it has to be playing the same song. Could you imagine that the naval um, orchestra would get together and instead of playing, anchors away would begin to play, some of them would begin to play, we all live in a yellow submarine. <laughs> that would be kind of chaotic, wouldn't it? So watch this. When Jesus speaks to us, obviously he was concerned about the rules, the regulations that uh, manage the human race. But he went further than the Ten Commandments and said, down inside there's something that every person needs to be tuned into. And then thirdly, we have to be doing what God wants us to do. A lot of times when we think of this, many people, and listen, listen to this, and I want you to have a good comeback, but many people, our friends, would say this, well, I'll go ahead and do that because it's not hurting anyone else. How many of your friends say that? All right, okay. Uh, uh, it's okay. I'm not hurting anybody by doing that. All right, now just imagine this, that I'd like to get in my truck in a moment and just drive whatever way I want to. Well, I can only get by with that for a little while because ultimately I'm going to crash or run into somebody else, right? Um, so please be able to respond to your friends. Uh, what, else, what I'm doing is not hurting anyone else. Well, they're only thinking about the first aspect of this. But secondly, is it hurting them uh, down inside? Are they in tune? And thirdly, are they in tune with what God expects out of us? Uh, you and I might think of this. What good would a law be if a person is not tuned into it and ultimately will break that law. Uh, nothing but unselfishness will ever make the whole thing work, and that's why Jesus said this, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my load is light. Most of us are good old sinners at this game. Nod your head with me. Most of us are good old sinners at this game because what we'll do is we'll see this and obey something temporarily until we learn how to play the game a different way. Isn't that true? Um, uh, here's an example of this. Um, if I can read my own writing, there you go. Uh, but driving to and from work, um, uh, this often happens people will start changing their routes because the route that they had been taking is well policed. And so they'll look for a, a route, a way to go to work with fewer police policing the speed, right? All right, so we're good old sinners at this stuff because we'll get along with the rule or the law temporarily until we know how to work around it. Jesus spoke to the need of us being moral inside and most definitely when we take a look at this you and I have to consider one more thing and it's very very popular in our society today 
Are you the landlord of your ship or are you?